which I am Bangalore conducted the exam or took up the exam where the pattern was changed and what we saw from there was literally a nightmare for DI and, DI and LR section. In fact, it so happens that English used to be okay for students. It used to be okay, it's not really worrisome. DILR used to really beat them out of shape. And even if quant was easy, that broken tuta futa mind, you are re reaching out to that quant section and even a simple calculation, a simple concept which you already know, students were not in a position to answer them simply because of the middle section which was the DI and LR. So over the last five years, I can definitely say that on an average, the pa paper was about moderate level. It was definitely not easy, probably one year was easy, but otherwise the paper was moderate. I'll not say it is always difficult. Yes, one or two years the paper was on the difficult side, but not always. So we'll see an analysis on how many sets were there which were actually difficult. Was it really undoable? Let's take a look at that. Okay. Uh, so if you're looking at the DINLR, so these, this is what basically we figured out. We culled out every section and named it. We tagged every set that, that was there in the last five years. And this is the table that we were able to make. The most important topics for you as far as your DI and LR is concerned are these six. So you can take a look at these names. You can note them down. The slide will be here for probably about a minute or two. If you are a student who's many of you are starting your preparation right now, many of you were asking, what should I study guys? As far as your DI and LR is concerned, please notice that there are almost about 17 topics that we could figure out. Obviously you cannot solve all of them. You cannot prepare all of them right now. So if you are starting today, your target is very simple. These are the six topics that you will be putting your focus on because these have been asked the maximum number of times. The number of times each of these topics have come is the highest. I would guarantee that if you become comfortable in these six and only six guys, I'm not giving you more than six. If you can become comfortable in these six, I can guarantee that you'll be getting at least a 90 plus percentile. Just be comfortable. If you are good in it, you will end up getting a 99 for sure. I, I have data to prove that. I'm going to talk about it. Okay, so you don't have to be a stud in all the topics right now. Okay, so you can see the most important here is reasoning based DI. So we will, we will, uh, in fact, we have taken sessions where we explained what is each one of these type of questions. So DI, that data interpretation based on reasoning, matrix based questions. So basically you're talking about er, uh, not linear arrangements per se, but you know, the kind of questions which deal with uh, five people from five cities with five shirts, then there'll be data given. So all those kind of questions come under the matrix and grid kind of questions. So all these kind of questions, then of course you have Venn diagrams, then you have conventional and unconventional games and tournaments, you know, your round robin league, your uh, uh, tournaments, in fact, most of the tournaments that you have uh, are knockout tournaments. So your tennis, Wimbledon is a knockout, your, your uh, uh, CWG is a knockout, many of the uh, teams that play there will be getting, say, especially the individuals, you're out, you're out, right? So those kind of games basically come under this conventional and unconventional games and tournaments. So these are your main focus area. So take a note of them. I hope you've done that. Let's move ahead and take a look at the difficulty level as far as the sets are concerned. So if you look at the difficulty level, there are totally 75 sets that we have been able to analyze. And you can see if I take only the moderate ones, only the moderate ones, which I believe easy to moderate are the ones which I believe you should be able to pick and do it in the exam. So take a look at it. You have almost 44 out of 75. So you're talking about probably about 60% or about 59% more than half the paper for sure over the last five years was doable. Now I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is these questions are there to scare you. So if I give you 20 questions and 12 of them are easy to moderate, but if I give you eight questions, which are difficult, these eight questions is what will scare the students. The moment these eight questions, so imagine the first set you spent five, five minutes or 10 minutes in a 40 minute paper, you spent 10 minutes on one set. There is no answer. You took the second set. You spent another eight minutes. No answer. Eight questions difficult. Unfortunately, you picked look at your status. You got your mind. You have spent half the section zero marks 
and students will get to panic. What you need to realize, and this happens to a lot of students, it happened to me last year or last before year, but the confidence you need to have is, boss, in any paper, there will definitely be around 8 to 10 sets which are dead easy that I should pick up. In fact, the way I look at it is, this is guaranteed. 8 to 10 are there for you to pick. If you pick 8 difficult ones, don't worry, be happy. The reason is very simple. You know for sure that the next 12 you'll be able to crack. You know for sure that they are there to pick. You finished off the easy ones or rather the difficult ones. You passed the difficult ones. It's okay. No problem. But yeah, if you don't have that confidence that easy ones are going to stay there, then you're going to mess up the entire paper. So last year, or I think it was last before year, guys, 15 minutes or 18 minutes, I got zero questions. I could not pick because unfortunately, despite so much of experience, I picked two sets which are horrible. So then I knew for sure that in the last 20, 22 minutes, I have to pick two sets which are easy. I searched for them. Thankfully, I got, so I got a decent percentile. So please have it in your mind. Picking the wrong set is not the end of it. Get out of it. Make sure that the other sets which are easy, you are going to solve it. So that's the reason why the number of mocks are required because all these kind of experiments, all these kinds of bouncers are going to come to you in your mocks. You take a mock like a test drive, you know, you fall down, there's somebody there to help you up. You don't take your bike directly onto your highway, right? You learn it on a, a place where there is less amount of traffic, that's your mock. Make sure that you write these mocks, we will give mocks which are difficult, we are giving mocks which are, you know, having one difficult question at the beginning but then the other ones are easy. We will give you uh, mocks where uh, deliberately two or three questions are kept at the last in quant so that the easy questions are missed out if you don't reach the end of the paper. So all these kind of experiments we do in the mocks. So these are experiments on you, so, right? So you don't know how the paper is going to be. So you are, the more you write, the more experience you're going to get. So make sure that the mocks are taken very seriously. So I'm going to talk about the mock strategy about especially, not strategy, the mock timelines also. So please follow that. Right, so the next thing is, uh, yes. So the next thing we're going to talk about is, uh, the percentile. So let's take a look at what happened as far as uh, marks are concerned. You get around uh, six or seven, seven corrects. That's all you need. You don't even need half of it. In a 20 question paper, you get seven corrects, probably one mistake. So eight attempts, two sets, you are at your 90 percentile. That's all your target is my friends. Please keep this in mind. 